What's up everyone? Today we are painting the Abomination from Zombicide Green Horde. What we're focusing on with him today is some really cool scenery in which uh, we're going to make an ooze pile out of realistic water effects. He's also so big that I would call him a action figure instead of calling him an actual miniature. He is a giant beastie creature. But if you want to see how it's done, I'm going to get down to the table and show you. All right, so we started with the Xenophil highlight. I based him first in black primer and then went from a 45 degree angle and directly from the top with white to pick out the shadowed areas so we know where to start. And I'm us using Citadel's Warg Flesh. It's a base paint to take care of all of his skin and now he has a ton of skin uh, you want to make sure that you thin it down so that it goes over him smoothly and it will pretty much take two coats now I'm doing something a little different um, I've already cleaned up the model completely taken out all of uh, the flash which there was very little of but there was a gap uh, between his left arm and his chest so I had put some um, I think it's called green stuff in there before I had started all this. So what I'm doing a little differently is I'm starting with the darkest color and I'm going to lighten up, but I'm going to do it on the on a very large scale, which is his whole body. And so now I'm going into with uh, Vallejo model colors, a uh, flat green, and I'm going to dry brush this onto his body. Now, even though he has a lot of flat areas like his chest, and on his forearms, there's actually a lot of detail and a lot of ridges um, on his knees and elbows around his wrist. His back is rippling with muscles under his arms is rippling with muscles. So a dry brush actually works really well for this model. Next up, I have worm green, and I mix some worm green into the flat green and dry brush again. And so this is what he looks like now. Now you could go a little bit brighter from this if you want to, or you could stay right around that color. Um, here we have Vallejo Game Colors Khaki, which I'm going to start at the base of all the bony structures. So he has some spikes on his arms and shoulders, but then he also has this big ridge that goes right down his spine to... Uh, about halfway down his back and I'm going about a third up on all of these so all the spines and his um, and his uh, ridge on his back there about a th uh, about two-thirds of the way up sorry about two-thirds of the way up with this khaki so that's what we look like so far now I'm starting about a third of the way up higher and about two so about a third from the top um, and a little different on each one depending on on where they are but now I'm painting a little bit lighter color using that buff so these three colors uh, look very similar when put on a scale next to each other but you can see how now there's there's starting to be a gradient going up and it's okay that it's blocky it's not really that big of a deal and then finally we're using that ivory and we're just covering in the tips of everything so we want to make sure that um all the way across the all the spines the tips are covered in ivory I'm using Citadel's Agrax Earth Shade. Make sure you shake it up really well. And I'm getting this on just the spines. So I used not a very good brush. I used my dry brush here to put this on. And I would use a much finer brush because you don't want this to run onto the skin. You want this to just get down into the cracks, color in this, this bony structures to make it look like natural bone. But you don't want it to get all over the place. So you want to use something where you can have a lot of control. And here you can see it came out really really nice I also used uh, that buff here's buff again um, I used that color on the wraps on his feet and the little skulls around his waist so I didn't show that in the video but I did that as well I also colored them with the Agrax Earthshade now I'm going back with a buff and I'm dry brushing all of the spines so we're not going to go back to the the darkest color we won't go back to khaki but we're going back to buff and we're going to do the uh, wraps the skulls that are on his belt and all of his spines. Now 
Now finally we're going back to the model color ivory. You're going to see ivory a lot on this model. I use it a surprising amount of times. So I realized while I was editing this video it comes up a lot. But this model has a lot of detail and a lot of features and that's why ivory is really good to use because white would just be too bright. Ivory is an off-white and it really looks good on this monster. So I've gone back and now dry brushed all of the tips. So you don't want to paint back on the tips because if you paint on the tips it stands out. It makes very um, distinct lines and you don't want those lines. But here for the skulls, this is where I actually am painting on the ivory. Because with them, you want a nice flat color across them. Now you could, if you wanted to, dry brush them as well. But if you're going to do that, I would suggest painting the skirt first. Painting the red skirt. Well, I'm going to do it in red. You could do the skirt whatever color you wanted to. But if you paint the skirt next to these skulls, you have a really high risk of messing it up. Um, and having to do one or the other again, especially if you're going to dry brush on a finished model. So here you can see now the spines are done. We're done working with them. Time to move on. Vallejo model colors whole red. I am really in love with this brown red mix. Um, I've been using this on a lot of the models where I'm painting red. I think that this makes such an excellent shadow color for red. Now normally you can just mix um, like Vallejo's uh, flat brown in with the red and you'll get this color but what's nice is I don't have to mix I don't have to think about it I don't have to worry about it just pull this out and put two coats on any area and I get this nice solid chocolatey brown color that's just like a red velvet food cake here now I'm using flat red and the flat red I'm going to paint on top of this brown after the brown is dried. That brown does dry a little glossy. It almost looks wet on the model here. But I'm painting it on all of the ridges and all of the flat areas, leaving the brown in just the recesses. So here you can see this does take about three coats of flat red. Red does not cover the brown that well. But I think it's worth it because of how distinct the two colors are and how good they look together. Vallejo Game Colors uh, Orange Fire, or Fire Orange, I think. Um, I mix that a little bit into the red. We don't want to go too quickly on that. You don't want the skirt to be coming out um, orange. You want the red to brighten up and be more vibrant. But you don't want it to also be turning pink. Well, I mean, you might. If you want it to be pink, then put white in there. But putting the orange in there just brings it up into, up into a brighter scale. Now that we already have the orange in there, I'm adding a little bit of ivory and bringing it up again. And this keeps it from becoming pink. You can just see it's a very bright but lighter than it was before. Not changing the, the, the color of it from red to pink. Now I'm using fairy flesh and, fat, and flat flesh. I couldn't get the color exactly as I wanted it, so I found mixing the two of them together actually worked really well to give me this peachish, peachish skin tone that wasn't too bright. I felt like the flat flesh was very dull and orangish. And then the fairy flesh was very, very bright. And when I mixed them together, I got a really nice skin tone for his hands. And if you look in the artwork, the, the skin of his hands does look to almost be human. Now I'm going to wet blend the two of these together. And as I've said before, I'm very, very bad at wet blending. But this is how I do it. I put some of the original color, the green there on the wrist. Then I put some of the color that I used for the hands on the hand. Then I clean my brush off. And with a little bit of water, I go and mix the two together. And I do it in small areas at a time. Now, my secret to success, keep doing it. If you're going through hell, keep going, as they say. You want to just keep trying. Um, put a little bit more of the skin tone on, then a little bit more of the green tone, then the skin tone, then the green tone. And eventually, you see, it actually comes out pretty good. I, I find that my end result is not bad when it comes to wet blending. But... I do it in a very non, um, it's, it's not the best way to do it, uh, yeah. So now I'm going to paint the nails on the hand the exact same way that I did all the spines, which I'm starting with the khaki and then I move up to the buff, which I didn't show in the picture, but I did use buff and then I put the 
uh, ivory on the tip. So I just skipped that part because we've already seen it. Now the Reichland Flesh Shade, I'm doing Reichland Flesh Shade because I'm going to shade the hands as well. So I would normally use Agrax Earth Shade, but I felt like this made more sense for the hands and also distinguish the hands and the claws. Um, I also did it on his feet, but just the nails. I didn't actually put it on the skin of his feet. I just, I'm, but I am putting it on the skin on the hands. I thought it distinguished it, distinguished that area from the spines. I'm using a smaller brush and sort of painting it on. And then what you want to do is feather the Reichland flesh shade down the wrist. So you take your brush, you wipe off all of the uh, wash from it, and then start at the wrist and bring it back up the forearm and just sort of flick it up the forearm and it thins out that wash a ton so that you don't have a thick line right there uh, where the wash is and then where the wash isn't. Back to our favorite ivory here. And I'm going back and painting on the tips of the fingernails and highlighting a little bit on the nails. I then also used a very watered down buff and a very watered down khaki and went back over it as well just to sort of smooth the whole thing over because I wasn't very happy with how bright the ivory had become. I thought it was just a little bit too bright, a little too garish. So I, I toned it down a bit. Going back to the whole red, I also like this color a lot, not only for the reds, but for leather. So I'm painting on the face mask, which is like a leather cap that the Abomination is wearing. And I'm painting it as if it was his face. So we're gonna start with a darker color and lighten it up. Uh, it'll make it look like leather, but it'll also retain the features of his face and not just look like paint slapped on his face. So here's the reddish flesh. Uh, this is from the Nocturnal line and I'm painting in the tongue. He has a big, his mouth is wide open. He's got a big fat tongue there. So you want to make sure that you color it in. It'll look really funny without that done. Then Vallejo model colors flat brown. And that I am painting just like I said, as if this was his face and not a mask on top of his face. I'm getting all of the raised portions, the top of the head, and then around the eyes, the ridges, and his nose. Then I'm adding a little bit of ivory to that flat brown and doing it again. And I'm going to pick out all the highlights. Well, first, I'm using pure ivory here to do his teeth. And then I'm going to uh, do the, the, the brown on his mask. And I would say um, putting a little Agrax Earthshade in his mouth to tone down the whiteness of the teeth and basically color in around the tongue not a bad idea that might be something that you might want to do i don't remember if i did actually do that on him i do remember thinking about it so we'll see if all of a sudden the teeth and the tongue get toned down in a little bit i used agrax earthshade to do that secret i recorded this a little while ago uh mechanicus standard gray that is going to go on all of the metal pieces so the mechanicus standard gray um, gives a really nice dull tone to make uh, it look like old steel. And so I'm painting that on all of the metal surfaces. He has it on both arms. He has it on one leg. And then also in his shoulder, I painted it in the center of that raised section. But you don't want to paint the raised section. We're going to do something special with that. Now I'm using Nuln Oil from Citadel to paint... Um, or to wash over the metal. This is going to make it look really grimy and dirty and gross. So it's going to look oily and old. But you don't want too much. So I will I will do a little public service announcement here. If you put too much on it, it's going to look chalky and ashy. So you don't want to do that. So while that Nuln Oil is drying, it's going to take a little while for that to dry. I'm using a real dark green, refractive green from Vallejo's uh, model color. Any sort of dark sludge green. And we are now starting on the swamp. So this is probably the coolest base that I have done so far. I've now done two of these because I have two abominations. This is my second abomination here from the Horde, um, the Horde box. And I am painting in that whole flat area there of where I want the water texture to go to where the swamp is going to be. 
Now I'm using the texture paste. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen me use this on all of the minis. This is what I make the ground out of basically. And this is everywhere that isn't water. So anywhere you painted green, don't put this. Don't put this anywhere you painted green. You see what I mean? Um, you also want to, it's kind of difficult to work with. Um, you just sort of slap it on there and then push it around. Now, I didn't show this, I don't believe, in the video. Yeah, I didn't show it. So, flat red. You'll see what I'm doing with flat red. Real quick, go back to the um, steel that I showed. I dry brushed that steel across all of the places where I did Mechanicus Standard Gray, going from top down. Then I painted red on the outside of just this portion here, and I'm using the copper color, the copper metallic, from... GW and it takes two to three layers this stuff does not cover very well but it's gonna make that look so amazing you'll see it in a second when it's all dried up here and now I'm using a really flat yellow color and a, a basic black color and that is what I'm gonna do the eyes with so I'm not mixing those two together I'm going to paint the yellow for the eye and then take the black and color in the pupil now Vallejo Model Colors buff, old trusty here. I'm gonna go back and um, get the little strings that are around his his wrist here. So if you have any questions of anything that I did on here, because I kind of went fast there at the end, please leave a comment below, don't worry about it. But here is the model finished. Now we're gonna work on the scenery, but you can see the copper on his shoulder there. It just pops, it looks so good with that red base coat on it. So now I'm taking Citadel's Beal Tan Green. Make sure you uh, shake it up really, really well. And then that is going on all of the uh, texture paste. So again, not in the green color that we painted, not in the swamp. This is where the grass is going to gr go. And you want to make sure that this is behind that grass. So if any of the grass doesn't stick when a little spot comes up over time, you'll see green on the bottom, not black and white. So now here's the Vallejo uh, water texture. This stuff is, well, it looks like nothing at first. It's pretty unassuming, but it is so cool. So you're going to slop it on. You want a nice thick coat of it and then just move it around with your paintbrush. And it's okay if it is all choppy. That's actually a good thing. But you want to make sure that there is a, a thick amount of it on there. Um, enough that you know that if you would were to poke it with something, it would leave a dent in it. That's what that's how about how thick you want it. Put this all over the green, and it's going to dry crystal clear. So now, after it is dried, give it at least an hour. I'm using some yellow and some flat green, and there's my mixture there. I have about five different shades in there just from mixing them together, and I'm starting with my darkest pure green. Uh, the, the flat green that I was using and I'm leaving that little layer of that swamp green that you can still see There's still like a very thin line between the grass and where this green sludge is starting Now I'm gonna come in a little bit from the edge with a little bit of a lighter color And I'm gonna paint in that lighter green. This is you know the green mixed with yellow I'm going up the spectrum that I had made then I'll do this a couple more times and then we'll get to the brightest color So now I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and put pretty much pure yellow there but I also have green still on my brush and what I do is after I put that down I then sort of uh, blend it all together so that it doesn't stand out too much you want it to be like a hot spot in a fire but you don't want your eyes to directly go to that so if you were to you'll see here when I first put the yellow on if I left that yellow there that would stand out but after I come back and swirl it a lot around a little bit in some of the green it just sort of highlights that area. Now we're gonna come back to ivory. Ivory is gonna get mixed in with the green and we're gonna get a very, very light green color. This is incredibly light. And I know the camera is swaying back and forth a little bit here. I hope it doesn't make you dizzy, but that's also me on the table because I'm tapping this. I'm not actually painting it. I'm tapping, tap, 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 really, really lightly to make it look like um, waves where the abomination is stepping. And you'll see after I'm finished, this looks exactly like waves. Eh, I wouldn't say exactly. It looks like waves from three feet away. 
but it makes the water look a little choppy. So now I'm using just some regular Elmer's glue and I'll mix a little water in there and this is what we're going to use to stick on our grass. So I'm going to take that Elmer's glue and just put it wherever you put that Beal Tan green. Next up we're going to, I'm well the way that I do it I use the Battlefield Brown um, from Army Painter. And I put some chunks of that on first and tap it away. And then I will use some of the green grass and you'll see my fan blow it all over the place. None of it actually gets on the model. So I have to move in front of the fan. And then I put it on there. And then tap it down with your finger to make sure it sets in the glue. And then tap the model on the side and all of the excess will fall out. Then all you want to do really is get some black in and outline the base on the side there so that you get one nice color and then you're ready to clear coat. If you do use a matte finish, make sure that you uh, gloss varnish the, the swamp in the front or it won't look as good. But there he is all finished in all his glory. This is the first one I did with the blue base and a darker skin tone and using gold instead of silver for the metal. I thought he came out awesome as well. You can see the two of them here ready to smack each other down. They look like brothers in arms here. Which one do you guys like better? Let me know the lighter one or the darker one. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the video and if you want to see more Zombie Side Green Horde videos. And I will see you all next time.